This is TacGamer007 here, and it's been over a week since I uploaded a video on this channel. So I'm going to give you a huge analysis I've been working on of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This analysis is going to split up into three parts, in the same video of course, exploration, combat, and enemies. The enemy section is more for people that want to know every enemy that's discovered before the game release that was shown in the Gamescom demonstration. The timestamp for these categories is going to be in the description below. This is the first time making an analysis. I would love if you tell me how I mess up in the comment section below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like videos like this one. And let's get on with it. Exploration, a huge breath of fresh air of the virtual world, could be the reason why people play Xenoblade Chronicles other than the story, of course. Even the original Xenoblade Chronicles had its massive open areas, although it was somewhat a linear experience than Xenoblade Chronicles X. Although Xenoblade Chronicles fans should know this, but Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is in the, just in the middle. It's huge, but not as huge as Xenoblade Chronicles X, so it's linear but not linear as Xenoblade Chronicles, but not as open as Xenoblade Chronicles X. So, by looking at the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Gamescom demonstration, there's a lot to go over. So let's get started. During the expiration part of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 demonstration, confirmed achievements built in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, just like Xenoblade Chronicles X. So because Switch doesn't have its own achievement system, it's great to see something to tell players their progress throughout the game on their way to 100% of this game. Well, I don't know if people could. Well, most likely will because it's more linear, but Xenoblade Chronicles X, I still find things to do in that game. But the list of achievements I've seen throughout this demonstration is called Shackle, level one, River Blessing, level one, Guard Chef, level one, Purifying Flames level 1, Respendulance level 1, and Emergency Mode level 1. I am almost positive that the achievements that have levels may have many different stages. It's possible that achievements are also tied to a blade as well, like Sackle, um, Shackle I should say, had a picture of a blade. Um, that I did not see before. I think it's on the promotional art of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but I'm not sure. And Pyra, Respendulance. So we just have to figure out and wait and see to find out this in later trailers, gameplay demonstrations, or when the game release. Also finding the demonstration, I found a system called Idea that was found. And I don't know, but it might be similar to the Affinity system. I said this because it's a compassion. It might be a poss possibility that it's saying that, oh, this character level up this emotion throughout battle and stuff like that. And it's maybe possible that it's showing how Nina grows as a character after a certain requirement throughout battle. But that's me thinking about it. And it's also possible that it could be showing the progress of the character affinity by doing something else outside or during the battle like a requirement like I said before but that's the only idea I could think of what the idea of is or it could be a notification or something that you need to do this work on this I could tell you this that collection of loot is similar to Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles X so if the enemy do drop loot you'll be able to pick it up choose what you want or choose all of it and move on with your merry day you don't have to pick up all of the loot like many other RPGs and clutter your whole inventory with trash. You can actually pick what you want after defeating the enemy. You, it's also possible that you can leave the enemy's loot if you're in a hurry as well. So like previous Xenoblade Chronicles games, leaving the battle decreased the team attack meter. Also in other parts of the exploration, parts of the world, you'll be able to interact with NPCs and if you have 
a question mark, if the NPCs have a question mark, you'll be able to start a side quest when close to them. They may ask the player to help them, like what's shown right now. This side quest shown the Masatuki Iguana causing the NPC trouble and the party helped the NPCs after beating the Iguana you get a quest for Raggy that from the new NPC you just met and you save from this Iguana and you get a new quest called got to start somewhere Nintendo UK also confirmed that your blades have the power to interact with the environment they also gave a long detail explanation but I'm not here for bore you to the small details outside the game analysis like the actual gameplay so if you want to watch this you have to look for it in the demonstration yourself if you want those details um, also looking in the gameplay it looks like affinity spot but I'm not sure if it's affinity spot but it's really really far away and you can see like a sign but it could be also a, a location for side quests as well and I also want to add that a cunning saggy to the exploration part other than combat if you the combat part is gonna be after this because it's a unique monster and very powerful for the level range it's possible if you want to find him for some good reason for something like that I don't know he's found near the midnight Terrence. Also, through exploring the environment and everywhere in the world, you'll be able to see other blades and drivers throughout the world. They have a it's possible that they are hunting you down, they attack, they have the red bars, um, they look like they're ready to attack you, and they seem like they're tough because they should have the same abilities as Rex at this level, because they're around level 21 around that time level. So, I don't know how powerful, it would have been a huge great, it would have been a huge part of the game if you're able to fight other blades that have almost the exact abilities other than Pyra than you. And that would have been amazing for the story and for the lore of the world. So let's move on to the last part of the section of the analysis. This gameplay confirms that multiple cities, unlike Xenoblade Chronicles X, because it was like one huge city and it could expand over you doing affinity missions and side quests in the cities you can continue the storyline restock or sell items and we don't even know if we'd be able to buy new blades or upgrade them because blades are actual people i think uh weaponized people so i don't know if you're able to buy blades or you need to find them in the world or anything like that we'll find this out in later trailers or demonstration whatever they want to do for Xenoblade Chronicles so this is all of the expiration parts I could find in the Xenoblade Chronicles Gamescom demonstration and by the end of this analysis you will be tired of me saying at the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Gamescom demonstration oh you guys have a journey ahead so let's move on to combat This analysis will analyze everything I see in combat because I didn't make an analysis for E3. So let's look at the battle against the Cunning Saggy that showed at the end of the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Gamescom demonstration. And it's somewhat a strong enemy. And this battle shows everything in combat, a lot in combat, I should say. The battle starts with Rex beginning his three hit combo. If he didn't know from E3, the basic combat is when the player is standing still and it will activate three hit combo and each hit in the three hit combo will progressively get stronger than the last. If the player moves even a little bit, the combo resets and to continue the basic combo you need to stop moving and be in range of the enemy to continue with the three hit combo. The three hit combo can also charge basic arts. Basic arts is shown at the lower right of the screen. Each blade has a different element. For example, Tora blade is a stone element and Nina's blade is an aqua element. Rex have three blades, Pyra, which is a fire element, Karabaki, an wind element, and finally Karagaki, an ice element. I might butcher those names. If you use 
basic arts and a three hit basic combo, you can charge this new type of art called elemental art. With these arts, you'll be able to create strong combos with your party. Elemental arts have many levels. In the beginning of battle, you need to charge up the elemental art. So you can't use it in the beginning of battle, but after using more basic arts and basic combos, you'll be able to use level 1 or level 2 elemental art. For example, an elemental art called Heat is for Pyrus Blade. For Pyrus Blade, if you charge the elemental art with your party, you'll be able to create an elemental art combo. Two elemental art combos with Pyra is called Volcano. So by using Tour Stone, Pyra Heat Elemental Change to Volcano. By using Volcano, you have the option to change your blade and you'll be able to change your blade to combo with the Volcano status effect on the enemy. So Rex was able to change to Karabaku, that is a wind elemental blade, to make a strong elemental combo called Volcanic Storm. This will reset the elemental level and you need to charge it again. You will notice that an ore will be cycling around the Cunning Saggy. This will reset the elemental level and you need to recharge it again. You will notice that it's an orb circling around the Cunning Saggy. The orb increased the resistance of the element circling around the enemy throughout the battle. In this case, the enemy increased resistance to win and the element that have the orb is determined by the last element used in the elemental combo. You also able to set your teammates to use elemental strong attacks as well by doing the same thing but you need to set up your enemy by using level 1 or level 2 elemental art and making your party combo onto it instead of before using your party to set up the enemy and you combo it yourself now on screen it showed that Tora is using permafrost crush after setting up the enemy after Rex used freeze and then you use permafrost crush to start an elemental combo by using a strong elemental art you'll be able to seal the opponent's art or moves depending on enemies so in this case you're able to seal blowdown a, a really problematic move that cunning saggy used throughout the battle it was used to blow the party on the ground or cost topple on the party so you would be able to prevent this by sealing its move because it looks like that it seals the most used move or the most special move in the upper left corner you got three level bars returning from the other Xenoblade games you could do a team attack when it's full or you could revive a party member when the party member run out of HP in combat I will also tell you that Break is returning as a status element and you could apply topple to drop the enemy on the ground and a new third call launch it would spin the enemy in the air so I found out through this Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Gamescom demonstration that is no normal healers to heal yourself you need to use an art called like HP Potion and this will drop parts of the enemy's health on the ground and if you want to heal yourself you need to stop your combat because to attack you need to stay still so you need to stop what you're doing and you have to risk stop attacking your enemy to heal yourself that's all that I see for combat so let's move on to enemies Let's move on to enemies. In this section, we will be talking about the enemies of Zelda Chronicles 2 that was shown in the Gamescom demonstration. I will tell you where the enemy is located and if the enemy attacked the party or not. And if you want to know how I get these locations, the location of the party are at the upper right corner of the screen. If I can identify the creature, I will tell you. 
I am going to split the enemies into two parts, unimportant and important. The important enemies are going to be in part of the exploration part of the video. Let's get started with the enemy called Limbo Flammy. It's level 19 through 21. And base, what I see in the demonstration, it's located in 8 rock skip and it does not attack the party. I would classify this enemy as a bird type enemy. The next enemy is called Prom Pramax. It's level 21 at 8 rock skip and does attack the enemy. I would classify this enemy as a fish. Let's move on to the next enemy called Rebel Crabble. It's found at level 21 that I seen at the 8 rock skip and it doesn't attack the party. I would classify this as a crab or a fish. Let's move on to two enemies, Pari Puffat and the Nomad Rhydon. They both found at level 23 at the Farleen's Wells. And they both attack the party. I would classify the Pari Puffat as a bird. And the Nomad, I really don't know what type of species is that. Let's move on to Smart Alago. It's level 21 and found at the Far Leaned Wells. It attacked the party as well. Let's go to another enemy. Uh, kind of uh, not as much exploration, but the Whispering Iguana was level 21 at the Pazala Salusa. Probably pronounced that wrong. And this enemy does attack the party. And let's move on to Zach Anzalo. I about to butcher that again. Is level 24 and located near the, the Drillborn Bridge. This enemy also attacked the party. And let's go to the last enemy of today, or last enemy for the section the Caroline Sky Wart at level 23. And it could be found at the Monnet. Terenets. And I couldn't find out how this enemy looked like, so I'll be showing you on screen um, the picture I found. Like, it, you couldn't see the full enemy. And that's all the local enemies I see in the Gamescom demonstration. So, yes, it's about time to end my video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And I would love if you could subscribe to help expand my channel and share the video if you think you can inform someone else. Comment below. I would love your opinion on how you like my analysis or dislike it or give me some feedback. This is Talk Gameplay 007 and I see you in the next one. Peace.